Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Yoshi and on this channel you can join me on a creative journey full with cool series about photography and videography. As you may know in my, from my previous video, if you didn't, please check it out right now. But if you didn't, yeah, basically the month of May here in Belgium has been terrible regarding the weather. It's been raining, it's been pouring all day until last weekend. Last Sunday it all of a sudden stopped raining and people just decided to go out on a walk and even I wanted to go out to take some photos again. It's been about three weeks since I've taken photos so I wanted to do something different. Now looking to my statistics on my YouTube channel, one of my most liked videos from the past few months is the one in which I did take some creative self-portraits using the GoPro Hero 7 Black. And I was wondering, can I still think about three different compositions, three different angles or three different type of photos to just add to that same video? And that's exactly what I did and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about right now. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video, but first it's time for some b-roll. seen a few of my previous videos then you will instantly recognize this forest and I went to the same forest to take some cool photos again basically because it's close by my house and simply because I want to challenge myself to still take some creative shots in the same location over and over again so that's what I did and I found this cut down tree over here and basically what I wanted to do was yeah take a similar shot than a photo I found on Instagram or Pinterest I don't remember anymore and give it my own typical style. I wanted to play with the sun a bit uh, which is really difficult using a GoPro because yeah GoPro footage and GoPro images basically are really low quality because of the small sensor and they lack a lot of depth. One thing you need to keep in mind when using your GoPro to take self-portraits, and by the way, I take all my self-portraits by using my smartphone as a controller for my GoPro, or you can use the self-timer from the GoPro as well, but in that case, you won't have the live view of your GoPro screen, and then it's a bit more difficult. Now, with the latest GoPro Hero, Hero 9 already, I believe, it's possible to see from a close distance what the GoPro actually sees because there is this LCD screen on the front of the GoPro as well. Or with an Osmo Action from DJI that's entirely possible as well. Anyway, back to the location. So basically I wanted to play with the sunlight and create some sun flares which is really difficult so I had to move around and yeah, basically um, yes, yeah, stay quite still because of the wind, it was not always easy. So I took a few shots and because the leaves are already growing on the trees right now, spring is really hitting here right now, I wanted to create these moody edits. And one more thing guys that you need to consider if you take self portraits or portrait photos in general, you need to create some, basically because of the wide angle, the lens you need to create layers of depth by yourself by adding things in the foreground and in the background and you put your subject in the center of the frame. You just need to keep in mind that your background isn't too busy because it won't blur too much of the background because of the camera limitations. So I really recommend you don't pick any busy background but the same goes for any other camera just keep it simple. You need something in the background but don't make it too busy otherwise your subject basically will entirely blend in the background and that's something we totally want to avoid. And then basically I played around with a different composition. I put the GoPro vertically on the ground and I used some leaves which were growing over there from the grass 
and put them in front of the lens and that way you create some depth in the foreground and I created a leading line by following the tree basically and I was standing on top of the tree stem. So I really loved these shots, unfortunately the quality isn't too great because of the GoPro and you still have that lens distortion. So those things you need to keep in mind when you want to take photos with your GoPro. I went to one last location, I only did two locations but three different photos. And on the second location you will recognize that forest as well, I used it for my The Last of Us Photoshop composition and by the way for my fans of my Photoshop compositions I'm currently working on a different one. Actually it's been in the making for almost three years with many ups and downs and currently I kind of get the feeling it will turn out into something great but I'm not recording it the same way as I did with my previous Photoshop composition because I feel that people lose their attention quite fast so I'm going to talk about it and show some behind the scenes footage but in a different way. It's still in the making, I hope it will be released this summer but it's coming soon. Anyway, back to the second location. On this second location I wanted to try something different, also inspired by a photo I found over on the internet and basically I already took some photos with my Nikon camera a few months ago during the challenge episode 2. I did these motion blur tree photos, so basically I call it paintography. Basically what you need to do to achieve this effect is take a photo of a forest with vertical trees so they shouldn't be too curly otherwise it won't work and then all you have to do is pick a longer shutter time and during time that the shutter opens you slowly move your camera up along the lines of the tree and that way the trees will be faded out and you get some natural motion blur basically. With a GoPro this is quite difficult and especially if you're taking self portraits so what I basically did was I took one photo of the composition without me standing in the frame then I took one photo of me standing in the frame holding my phone in my right hand and then one photo with me holding my phone in my left hand because otherwise the phone would be in the frame as well and then during post I basically merged all three photos together removed the smartphone and then I was able to blur the background basically and create some motion blur and play around with the trees and that's how I got this edit and that's it guys it's uh, it's a bit different let me know in the comments down below whether you liked it or not let me know which of the three photos you liked the most and if you want more of these shorter videos and then the only thing that rests me to say is oh no 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 Yoshi you were forgetting one more thing that's obviously in frame Sunday and I will jump straight into the hashtag and will thank you for 1168 posts you guys are rocking and the first photo that really pops up is this one from photographs by Mario I already featured him on this channel and I really love his work he shoots most of his content with his smartphone I believe I'm not entirely sure about this one. Yeah, it's again shot with his smartphone So guys this once more proves that you don't need any Expensive gear to get started. Don't make excuses about that. Just start and you great with whatever gear you have Basically why I love this shot so much is because the red ladybug really pops in the shot It creates some contrast against the green moody tones. I'm a really fan of moody tones So guys if you want to get featured on my youtube channel just use moody tones right now And also the yellow from the flowers really pops as well but the most important thing in this shot which really makes it stand out from the other ones is basically the different layers he applied. And with a smartphone this is really impressive. You have some blur in the foreground and you have a lot of bokeh in the background which really helps to guide the viewer basically to check the subject. And that's exactly the point of photography. Playing around with foreground and background elements that way you create a three dimensional photo. It doesn't feel like a flat painting or a flat drawing. So congratulations photographs by Mario. And then one last photo that really... But this one... Kutaro Mosca, this photo really stands out as well. I love the moody green tones as well. It's a bit different 
compared to the photo from Mario but then the second shot really is moody edited I really like those tiny water droplets that's one of my weak points as well I have a weakness for small water droplets for some reason I really love those so great job on photographing and I assume it's shot during the rain yeah and it's taken with your smartphone so great job and you also really nailed it with the blur in the foreground the bokeh in the background and focus on the subject so three layers creating depth in your photo great job Kutaru and with this photo I will end my video if you like this video please hit that like button if you didn't already please subscribe for more videos leave a comment down below and let me know which of my photos you like the most and the only thing that trust me to say is that you don't need to be great to start but start to become great see you in the next one bye <sighs>